So, last time uh, we briefly sketched the, this iterative voting aggregation algorithm, which is essentially an algorithm to find uh, kind of optimally the community sentiment, right? It's, you cannot use it as a gold standard for finding some kind of truth, but uh, uh, we can use it very efficiently to find the uh, uh, community sentiment, and uh, <coughs> I'll present only the basic algorithm, and then I'll sketch how it can be improved and generalized, and maybe some of you might want uh, to develop uh, such a version and test it on, say, uh, movie ratings as a nice, uh, um, nice application. In fact, what I was thinking once is uh, uh, the, the votes could be um, could be the five labels that uh, market analysts give to stock. Right? It's uh, strong buy, buy, neutral, sell, and strong sell. Right? And then you want to optimally find what is the sentiment among market analysts. Another option is you make a website when people can give their recommendations for stocks, and then every three months you can proclaim who was the best um, uh, market analyst among just crowd, right? And this would be to test this wisdom of the crowd notion that if lots of people who are not experts but just there is large multitude of them, that their opinion actually matches the opinion of the best experts, right? So there are many ways uh, how <coughs> this algorithm can be used and why don't we just find the mean or something like that? Well, the problem with simple methods like mean is that they can be easily skewed by outliers and by collusion attacks. So we want something that is more robust to what, uh, with respect to misuse and that it kind of optimally represents what the community sentiment is. And I was thinking about doing this uh, with a colleague at the finance department, and uh, she uses this uh, this thing to for her class, right? Uh, but uh, I never had a victim to implement it properly, right? Uh, the implementation I have is in Mathematica, which you would agree is not really kind of uh, very good. Uh, um, programming language for web applications. So there are a lot of opportunities for you to do project uh, uh, project now. So uh, remember how the, what was the main idea of the algorithm. Uh, you, uh, Jesus Christ, when did this school get some decent practice? Let's see. Okay. So um, you have a bunch of voting lists, which can be, for example, the five recommendations of each market analyst, right? So for example, it can be strong sell, sell, neutral, buy, and strong buy, right? Uh, so for each stock, Is this how you spell stock? Yeah, yes, yes. Good. A uh, lucky guess. Buy, <laughs> strong buy, right? And here you have stock. And uh, actually, let's call it L for list because in the implementation it's called L. Uh, and here again you have uh, the same. Uh, so each market analyst, so these are market analysts. Uh, so 
one and a two up to and a n say and they don't necessarily give data advice for all of the stocks but the requirements that they give advice for uh, more than one stock right so say this guy says here strong buy and says here buy and this guy gives here strong buy uh, and uh, so forth right so this can be seen as well. <coughs> Each market analyst votes on several elections, and the candidates are the, so to speak, ranking of the future for this uh, stock. Now, once you are given a table that tells you for which market analyst and for each stock if he rated it and how he rated. Right? So it would be just a big table. Uh, here you would have market analysts. Here you would have stocks. And uh, some of the entries, not necessarily all, uh, some of the entries you will have here uh, strong sell, maybe here strong buy, here neutral, and so forth. Uh, for each of the market analysts. So you are given this partially filled uh, table. Right? And now you want to aggregate these votes in an optimal way. Now, what does it mean, an optimal way? That's a tricky question with respect to what is optimality. Here we would say that it's optimal in the sense that it, the, it captures the best uh, the sentiment of the market analysts, uh, which means that the outliers <coughs> will not skew too much uh, who ends up being a winner here, right? And um, at the end of the day, when you implement it and you test it on the circumstances that the it performs well. So often we don't have really a strictly kind of mathematical criterion of so how does so what is the idea behind you not remember this biblical quote first we can see for each option how many market analysts voted for that option. So in this direction, in this direction, the algorithm evaluates the stocks. But in opposite direction, the algorithm simultaneously evaluates the market analysts. Yes? Is this assuming that all of the recommendations were made at the same time? Uh, yeah, this is, we will assume that they are approximately made in the, at the same time. That's correct, because okay. time dimension is really uh, important, right? In fact, uh, market analysts often revise. Uh, yeah, so we are assuming that this is all at the given moment, right? It's, say, quarter of the year, and they all give you this recommendation. So that's actually a very good point. For this to be useful, these evaluations should be approximately given at the same time under the so to make sure that it's under the same circumstances and in the presence of the same information, right? So <clears throat> this way we can see each option how many votes it got. But now we can evaluate market analysts. Uh, by, in a sense, totaling um, the scores. So say here is uh, uh, this option got 11 votes, this got 13 votes, uh, 5 votes, 7 votes, uh, 20 votes, and maybe here. So uh, here 
uh, uh, this market analyst will get, this is now we will refine it, but just to give you a rough idea, 20 points from here, and maybe here uh, there were 17 volts, he will get back 17 volts, right? And this will become its trustworthiness round. Here, trustworthiness means just compliance with the dominant view of the community, right? Uh, so market analysts who voted in accordance with the majority will collect lots of points because their options will have large counts of votes. Uh, market analysts that are outliers, right, um, they will get less trustworthiness rank. Now, it's important trustworthiness only in terms of compliance with the community. In fact, uh, you might want to pick the advice of a person who has low trustworthiness, but in the past made good decisions. How would you describe this person? in terms of, you see, so he is not voting in the same way as the crowd, but he is voting, he is making good predictions. Actually, his vote, in a sense, for practical application, he sh you should give him the highest trustworthiness, because that's the guy who will beat the market, who has different view from the majority. So, these trustworthiness ranks, they are just numbers that you have to figure out how to use them in making your own decisions. It doesn't mean that the guy with high rank is the guy whom you should trust or his recommendations, but just that he's highly compliant with the prevailing opinion, right? And guys with low ranks are kind of mavericks that think differently uh, from the crowd. <laughs> So you have to be careful, it's kind of misleading to call it uh, trustworthiness, right? So how does the, let's now see the details in order to make this algorithm both convergent and, uh, and so what is the idea? In first round, you recount the number of votes, then we aggregate these votes to find the trustworthiness of each uh, voter, and then in the next round of iteration, his vote will not be equal one. It won't count as one, but it will count as much as trustworthiness uh, he accumulated. So his weight of his vote will be amplified. And if you keep iterating, one can prove by a very pretty proof for mathematicians around. Uh, I told you that uh, um, it's a really cute proof of convergence, and then when this was published in the Transactions of Parallel and Distributed Systems, idiot the editor forced us to remove the proof of convergence as irrelevant, right? So there you go. You prove that your algorithm is not exploding, and they tell you that's irrelevant. So, um, by the way, I knew the editor for a long time, and I know it's a bit of <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is recorded. Um, this is past editor and he passed away, so uh, I shouldn't be saying bad things. Okay, so now let us see the details. So we will have two quantities, right? Uh, here, so each item, so this will be a list L, and each item I on the list, right? So there are plenty of lists, and each list has uh, not necessarily even equal the number of items. So each item here uh, on the list L, item I, will get a rank that we will denote as um, row uh, Li. So this is to be read a rank of the object I on the list L. And each reviewer R uh, will get a trustworthiness rank TR. Okay? Now we have to explain how these objects are 
calculated. <coughs> okay, so in, the algorithm will be iterative. And you will see in this course lots of iterative algorithms. Even for things that we have a, so to speak, discrete recipe how to solve, for example, how do you solve a system of linear equations uh, in how do they teach you in high school? Uh, you do substitution, right? You solve for one, replace every. Well, let me tell you, if you do this with large systems of equations that have round of errors, you are going to get garbage. So we don't, even though we have a finite algorithm to produce the solutions, all the software solves the linear uh, equations, large equations that can have round of errors, using an infinite algorithm, meaning a recursive auto algorithm that terminates when things stop changing very much. And this is much more robust <coughs> than uh, uh, even a Gaussian elimination with pivoting, right? So uh, for this reason, this being advanced algorithms, and because so many algorithms nowadays are iterative, just like paper and computation, we will see them quite often. So in the initial state, so this will be a round of iteration. So this is the starting point. Trustworthiness of each reviewer is one, which means <coughs> when he evaluates object, each object will get count of one for his vote, right? So now, how do we find um, the, in the first round of iteration, um, well, so initial row, so let me now have two variables. One will be, um, Oh, let's say I'll have a variable sigma li is equal to the following. And I'll write it in a complicated way, uh, just so that uh, you get used to notation. This is sum over all r's such that a reviewer r voted on the list l for object i, uh, and then trustworthiness of r, initial trustworthiness of r, and in fact, that's exactly what it is. So you tell me, what is this equal to, given that? Uh, what is this sum equal to? What is the R? It's one exactly for those R's that are voted for Li. So this is simply number of what? Number of votes item I on list L not because you simply sum ones for every R that happened to vote for this particular object. Right? So it will simply total uh, all of the, it will simply count how many analysts or waters, right, voted for this object. So this is simply the cardinality of uh, R's such that R voted on list L for object R. Okay? And now we, and this is uh, iteration zero, and now our row zero li is simply equal to sigma li row divided by square root of uh, the sum of uh, all uh, over all J of uh, sigma L J squared. So this step is simply, we didn't mention it before, it's simply a normalization. 
this guy will be simply sum of the number of volts, number of volts this object got, right? And then this number has to be prorated by with this. The consequence of this is that what will be sum of rho Lj when j belongs to, let me write it like this, on the least i. What is the sum of the squares uh, of these guys? Uh? Look, if you square these uh, and you sum them over all objects on the list, uh, what do you get? One. You get uh, exactly one. Right? Why do we do it that way and don't normalize, for example, with sum of all ranks? Uh, that I cannot tell you, except I can tell you the proof of convergence doesn't work. And lo and behold, uh, when you implement this and test it, this works by far the best. And it's crucial in the proof of convergence uh, that you have uh, uh, this normalization. Uh, Okay, so simply this is counting the number of volts uh, each item got and then dividing by the square root of sum of the squares uh, of the number of volts that each item got uh, so that the sum of the, so the upshot is uh, that on every list uh, sum of rho Lj on when j belongs to L is equal to 1. <coughs> this prevents things from exploding when we do the iterations. <coughs> okay? So this is the start. And here we should also have, yeah, we have everywhere zero, right? Zero round of iteration. So how do we do the recursion step? Well, this is the formula. Trustworthiness of a later bar, right, uh, at, uh, is simply equal to the sum of all rows Li such that R voted on the list L for an object R. Yeah? So trustworthiness, so now this is the this direction, trustworthiness of each guy will be sum of the rows of the objects that he voted for. Okay. And now, what is the expression for uh, sigma Li? Well, sigma Li will be simply sum of trustworthiness of all R's such that R voted on the list L for So this way, now sigma will be obtained. So each vote, notice, so these sums, if you just do counting, this will be always just one. One voter, one vote. But here, the this sigma is some total of trustworthiness ratings of all the voters that voted for this object. And then, just like here, so this will be tr n plus 1. Here we will have t uh, n plus 1. And then a row n plus 1. Li is simply the normalization, so it's sigma Li n plus <laughs> 1 divided by the square root of sum of sigma, oops, sigma, um, sorry, this will be here, yeah, sigma n plus 1, and this will be here, n plus 1, right? And this is here, end, previous round of iteration, right? And here it will be sigma uh, Lj squared 
lambda uh, n plus one index. Let me not write it so that, so that j belongs to n. So in this, so in the direction, in the biblical direction, when you evaluate the rankings, the voters, they collect the ranks of all choices that they have made. Right? That's their trustworthiness rank. In the, the normal direction, you simply total the trustworthiness, previously computed trustworthiness, of all the guys that voted for that object, right? And then you normalize it so that the sum of rho Lj squared is equal to 1. Is it clear how the algorithm works? Huh? Yes? Can you calculate the trustworthiness of one person based on one No, no, no. So it's totally global. So trustworthiness of a candidate, of a voter, is obtained as follows. You look for this voter, how he voted. Say he voted on this list like this, on this list like that in this list like this, and then his trustworthiness will be some of the rows of all the objects that he voted for. In the opposite direction, right, this sigma, right, in the opposite direction, uh, this sigma is simply sum of the trustworthiness of all the guys that voted for that object. And then you normalize it so that sum of the squares is equal to 1. So what is the idea? If you vote for something that many people voted for, these guys will be large. So your trustworthiness will be large. So when you evaluate objects, then your contribution to the rank of that object will be proportionately larger than the contribution of an outlier whose sum, who in total connect, collected just few objects. Uh, few, sorry, small ranked objects. Uh, right? So how does this work? So just imagine. I assume now just re recursively that uh, all of you guys have trustworthiness, right? And they vote who is the most handsome person uh, in the room, right? Initially, right, all of these guys will have trustworthiness one. So for each of you, your sigma will be simply some total of ones for each person that voted for you. So simply it will be number of votes that you got. Then we normalize this by dividing this by some of the squares of the numbers of votes so that the sum of the squares of all the ranks on a, on a list adds up to 1. Okay? Now I judge these guys. If he voted for you and then for you, then he will get back your row plus your row plus your row. Right? That will be his uh, trustworthiness. In the next round of iteration, his vote is not one, but is his trustworthiness. Uh, so if he voted for many people that other people also thought uh, they were handsome, which there wouldn't be very many when they look at you, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, so, uh, then his trustworthiness rank will be large. In the next round of iteration, impact on your ranking will be proportionally large than a ranking, the impact of someone who voted for people few other people voted. And you keep iterating. And this eventually converges. Right? And you can see in the lecture notes, critically, if you are mathematicians, definitely read the proof of convergence, but it is not compulsory, right? So 
but this is the the idea uh, behind. So uh, just each voter, each voter is judged according to how he voted because he will get ranks of all people he voted for, and then when he votes, he will his contribution to sigma will be his trustworthiness. So if he has large trustworthiness, it is will be larger right than other people, and then it's just normalized. And you keep spinning it until the rows stop changing much. You can find the threshold so that the norm, say, of vector rho doesn't change more than epsilon. And the convergence is extremely fast. Let me show you. You see, unfortunately, I did not, I forgot to bring my laptop, so I'll show you PDF. On the website, there is a mathematical code that you are welcome to change and to run and see how it works. Uh, let me just um, impossible to live without it. If you ask me what's the derivative of sign, I don't know. <laughs> because Mathematica knows everything, why should I bother? Right? So the uh, analytic, yes? I just have a um, question general. Does this not disproportionately um, favor people who vote on a lot of things, like favor market analysts who have put in an opinion for every stock? And very good, very good. That's very not good. necessarily a, a good thing. Very good. Feel. So hold your question. That's exactly what we are going to discuss. How can you adjust this algorithm to do things in a better, more realistic way, right? And uh, uh, what else you can do with this? And you might find it. Um, Really, that you want to implement it for whatever purposes uh, uh, you can uh, think of. So let me see, just quickly, let me show you that. Oh, I have to. Okay. So this is just a baseline algorithm, and then you fix it to do things in a better way. Here is your project, right? You asked the very right question to ask. Very, you see what the, this lady says? If someone votes on very many lists, even if he is lousy <laughs> voter, he will collect little bits and pieces from all the lists and he will, it will appear that he has large trustworthiness when in fact he is a crappy vote. So this obviously doesn't, this would be okay, for example, if everyone votes for every item, then there is no difference in terms of size. But of course, market analysts don't evaluate every stock, right? So, and some market analysts evaluate few stocks and some evaluate large number of stocks. So someone who is not a loud liar and gets very few points, but he voted on many, many stocks, he will get large trustworthiness rank. So the baseline algorithm for that example simply wouldn't work. So we have to adjust. Um, so now, but you see, every, every coin has two sides. Now one can argue as follows. Maybe instead of some total of the ranks, 
we should consider the mean of the runs, right? Now it doesn't matter how many items you voted for, on it, because the average will be just. But what's the problem with this? Now we have the opposite problem. Assume that I voted just for one item, and I happen to vote perfectly, right? My rank will be huge. What's the credibility if I vote for only one item that I am a good voter? So you have to make a balance. And this is usually done by the logistic function. Uh, so, we will, uh, so we will talk about that. Let me just quickly show you uh, the implementation, uh, which is a proof that I can actually program, which many people in this school doubt. So uh, let's see, uh, home, four, one, two, one, and one, we call that. If you go, uh, which one was it? It's this one. Yes. OK, this is what this is. So yeah, if you are not used to Mathematica, um, this probably will be a little bit confusing, but the idea is this. I have in this example 15 honest voters and 45 crooks, right? Which will be roughly the fraction of honest people and crooks in real life, right? So the honest voters vote God knows how, but on the last, so these are their choices. So columns are the choices that these people have made. So person number one on the first list chose one. Also the second person chose one. Third person chose two and then fourth. So you can see here, obviously, it's a one or two are the main kind of choices on the first list. And it happens that all of them think that on the last, which is, I think, uh, uh, let's see, L is, I think, 9. On the last list, uh, candidate number 1 is the best, right? Now you have 45 groups. So they all...